Boom! All right. So we continue in our discussion of the topic of suits. In this video, we're going to start talking, as we promised in the previous video, we're going to start talking about this thing that we refer to as rationalization. Right? As the word itself suggests, to rationalize something means to make it rational. Right? To make it rational. Right? I spend a lot of time discussing language as part of my teaching of mathematics because understanding language is a huge part of understanding mathematics. Right? We discuss mathematics with words, not just numbers alone, with words. We talk it, we write it, and a lot of times we don't stop long enough to actually consider the words that we're using. We just use it because we're using it. So you go in a class and the teacher talk about rationalizing a suit, so you just run with it. But if you pause long enough to look at the word and think about it, you will actually get a clue as to what the word means, as to what the word is actually suggesting, and that would feed into your overall understanding when it comes time to write numbers and figures and Greek and Hebrew and all them other things. All right? So when we talk about rationalizing the denominator of a third, for example, It simply means to make rational. And why we'd want to make rational the denominator of a suit? Well, let we start the discussion by considering some examples. So we spoke in earlier videos of the simple suit, the mixed suit, and the compound suit. So what we can find ourselves with is a fraction where the numerator or the denominator, or both, are expressed in the form of different types of suits. It could be a simple suit, it could be a compound suit, it could be a mixed suit. And I would have given a few examples of those coming towards the end of the video in the third series where we spoke about the division of suits. All right? So I'm going to use those same fractions in this video let me start with some of the fractions where we refer to the simple and the mixed suit so suppose we have a fraction like this we can have a fraction 3 over root 2 All right we can have a fraction let me say 2 over root 3 we could have something like uh, 3 over 2 root 2 and just to use the same numbers here you could have 2 over 3 root 3 all right so you have you find yourself in a situation where you have a fractional suit a fraction where you have suits a fractional suit um, I'm not sure that make any sense but forget it don't worry too much about it right you have a fraction basically with suits in the fraction that is basically what I'm trying to say here. The convention in mathematics is that as often as is possible, we rationalize the denominator of the third. That is to say, we manipulate the appearance of the third without changing its value so that the denominator is not a third. The denominator is not irrational then. The denominator is rational and more often than not, that rational denominator would take the form of an integer, a whole number. So in other words, we want to write this over as a fraction 
where the denominator is rational. Right? So what do we do? There's a very useful technique that we employ. I would have spoken about the whole fraction in a previous video. So basically, what we do, we multiply by 1. And we express the number 1 as a whole fraction where, in a case like this, where either a simple third or a mixed third is in the denominator, we multiply by a whole fraction where both the numerator and the denominator being equal would be the form would be in the form of another third which would be which which we would refer to as the third the third factor i think is what we what we call it in our previous video right this a third factor that will multiply by another third to give you and to give you a rational number and the best one we could choose is root two because root 2 by root 2 is 4. It's 2, sorry, not 4. <laughs> That's a common mistake though. Root 2 by root 2 is 2. So in other words, if we want to rationalize 3 over root 2, we just simply do this. We say 3 over root 2 is equal to 3 over root 2 multiplied by... For teaching purposes, I would normally write the denominator first. To drive from the point that the denominator is what you're focusing on and then of course once you decide what the denominator is you know that the numerator has to be the same all right so in other words i actually go through the thought process if you're thinking about this you have to think about the denominator first the denominator is what you're thinking about first and after you think about the denominator then you know immediately what the numerator is and then you could just write it as root 2 over root 2 but a lot of times I would write the denominator first just to drive home the point of course when you're in your exam and when you're doing your own work and you just write root 2 over root 2 right and of course in a situation like this we don't want to cancel because if we cancel it will take us right back where we began so in a case like this what we do is we carry out regular multiplication of fractions where we just multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. So in this case, the final answer would be 3 root 2, root 2 by root 2 is 2. All right. Now, we are allowed by convention to have thirds in the numerator, not in the denominator. Now, there is no, it is not a hard and fast rule. Let me make that point emphatically. It is not a hard and fast rule, but very often there would, there would be in a situation where you would be required to rationalize something like this. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> From our trigonometry, we know that we know what the sign and the cosine of 45 degrees. Yes. We know that the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 is the same. And as decimals, we, we use our calculator and we get what? Sine 45 is equal to 0 0.707106782120. 0 0.707. Right? Most students who do in mathematics would be happy to write sine 45 as. 0.707. However, for people who are doing admats and beyond, we enter the realm of thirds. So we will write that the sine of 45, we will say that the sine of 45 is equal to 1 over root 2. We know that. Very often we leave it as 1 over root 2 for the purposes of calculation and whatever. However, sometimes we are required to rationalize this and we rationalize it by simply saying that that is equal to 1 over root 2 multiplied by root 2 over root 2, right? Root 2 by root 2 is 2, 1 by root 2 is root 2, right? So the calculator that I am actually using here, there is a 
fraction option and they also have scissors on the calculator. And this is what I got on the, got on the calculator, not this. See? So in other words, they all, I mean, that is, a, that is a simple example of what I was just talking about. The fact that the calculator is set up in a way to give you the rationalized value and not the value that you would get when you use Pythagoras theorem. When you use Pythagoras theorem with 45 degrees, you'll get root two, right? And again, I would have done that in another video earlier on when we spoke about uh, the trigonometric ratios and we discussed the 30 degrees, uh, 45 degrees, 60 degrees and whatever, right? So as we, as we mentioned 30 degrees, let me talk about it again. Just to give another example, excuse, <coughs> oh, excuse, you see how exciting life is when I'm making videos. Um, let me use the angle 30 degrees to demonstrate another situation, same kind of thing. So you have 30 degrees, right? I'll give you a quick recap of what we did. One and two, sorry, not two, two is here, not there. We know that the sine of 30 is a half, which means that if we're using Pythagoras theorem to calculate the, value, the length of this side, then we know that the length of this side would be root three, right? Right, no problem, hold on. Right, I'm showing you rationalization in action. I'm showing you how we use the thing, right? This, the length of this side is root three. So in other words, Using Pythagoras theorem, the tangent, that's 30, yeah? The tangent of 30, using Pythagoras theorem, the tan of 30 is 1 over root 3. And that is correct. Nothing is wrong with that. That is correct. However, on the calculator that I'm using here, if I try to find out what the tan of 30 is, and I have it in fractions mode, the answer that I would get would be root 3 over 3. Or 1 third root 3, 1 over 3 root 3. And I would get that, of course, by the process of rationalization, which would be, um, I want to write it as close as possible to this, which would be what? <coughs> Let me take a space in the middle here, right? Which would be 1 over root 3, Multiply by root 3 over root 3, which will give you root 3 over 3. So in other words, in each of those three cases, we use whole fraction. Whole fraction. And in the example that we did just now, whole fraction. So we multiply by the whole fraction. And of course, the beauty about the whole fraction is that we could choose it to be whatever we want it to be. And you'll see that as we rationalize search, whatever we want, we can make it equal to that. In other words, whatever is the convenient whole fraction, and we multiply by one, and you're good to go. <clears throat> All right, so let me do a couple more of these examples in blue, just to demonstrate the actual mathematics of rationalizing when we're dealing with simple and mixed suits. All right? So, <coughs> we did this one already. Uh, let me do, let me come down here and do this one. Because this one will clearly be the same thing. You would have seen that, right? With the, well, it was one over root three for the tan of 30, but the process will be the same for two over root three. All right, but we will do all the way. Well, let me come here. In fact, let me go here and finish it off. So 2 over root 3, if we rationalize in that, would be what? 2 over root 3 multiplied by root 3 over root 3. Root 3 by root 3 is still 3. And that would be 2 root 3 over 3. So in other words, again, you have a mixed in the numerator and a whole number in the denominator. All right, we finish with that. Quick and snappy. How about... 3 over 2 root 2. We want to rationalize 3 over 2 root 2. Alright? Now, you could 
multiplier by a whole fraction with 2 root 2 as the denominator. So you can say that 3, is the, 3 over 2 root 2 is 3 over 2 root 2 multiplied by 2 root 2 over 2 root 2. No problem. 2 root 2 by 2 root 2, 2 by 2 is 4, root 2 by root 2 is 2, 4 by 2 is 8. So the denominator of the answer will be 8, whole number. 3 by 2 root 2 is 6 root 2. Of course, 6 over 8, you'll get 3 root 2 over 4. Or, alternatively, you could have said, instead of multiplying by 2 root 2 over 2 root 2, I could just say that that is 3 over 2 root 2. I could just multiply by the same root 2 over root 2 that we used earlier on. Watch, the two will cancel here, right? So we could just go here, simply because we have the third factor as part of the mixed third, two root two. So in other words, if the mixed third in the denominator is two root two, then all we need in terms of constructing the whole fraction is root two in the denominator. And once we have root two in the denominator, of course, the whole fraction being what it is, we also have root two in the numerator. So that will give us now, um, we get now 3 root 2, 3 by root 2, 2 root 2 by root 2, root 2 by root 2 is 2, 2 by 2 is 4, 3 root 2 over 4. The same 3 root 2 over 4 that we had in the corner over here. Alright? So in other words, from a purely mathematical point of view, it matters nothing whether you multiply by... 2 root 2 over 2 root 2 or root 2 over root 2. The final answer is the same. So whatever you prefer, just roll with that. Alright? Nice. So let me go this guy here now. 2 over 3 root 3. Yeah, let me do that. So we're rubbing off in the corner here now. Alright? <coughs> so... 2 over 3 root 3, and we want to rationalize. Remember, what we are rationalizing is the denominator. We're not rationalizing the whole zone. We're rationalizing the denominator, which would have the effect of expressing the fraction in a different form with the same value. And how we know that the value is the same? We know that the value is the same because we would have multiplied it by 1. You multiply anything by 1 and the value doesn't change. We just express 1 in the form of a whole fraction. That's all. Yeah? So, 2 over 3 root 3, right? 2 over 3 root 3 is equal to 2 over... Again, we'll do the same thing we did there just now. We multiply by 3 root 3 over 3 root 3. You see any cancellation now, eh? But let me just go through the maths. 3 root 3 by 3 root 3, 3 by 3 is 9, 3 by 3 is, sorry, 3 by 3 is 9, root 3 by root 3 is 27. So this will be 27, and that will be 2 by 3 is 6, 6 root 3 over 27. You divide each of those things by 3, and you get 2 root 3 over 9. Alright, again, just as we did, you could do the alternative and say that this is equal to 2 over 3 root 3 multiplied by root 3 over root 3. Uh -huh. What we have here? 3 root 3 by root 3. Root 3 by root 3 is 3. 3 by 3 is 9. Right? 2 by root 3 is just 2 root 3 over 9. Which is the same 2 root 3 over 9 that you had here <coughs> 2 minutes ago. <coughs> Let's see. Alright, so again, it doesn't matter whether you multiply by 3 root 3 over 3 root 3 or root 3 over root 3. Whole fraction in either case. You choose your whole fraction properly 
looking for the root 3 as the third factor. <coughs> Excuse, I want to do that. Matter fix, problem done. All right, so this is what I would refer to as the first level of rationalization. Let me call it rationalization one. We're now going to go into rationalization two. But before we do that, we need to spend a little time talking about the conjugate. Right, we're now going to deal with compound suits. And we have our little extra things that we have to consider. For that, <coughs> excuse, we're going to do that now. So stay tuned. It's coming up in the next video.